Hey guys, I'm Dee and welcome back to my channel. So as you can see, I am going to be talking about something a little bit different today. So I am in scrubs right now and the reason why is because I'm going to be talking a little bit about what I do for a living and some of its pros and cons. So I'm a cardiac sonographer. You can also refer to this position as a echo sonographer or a echocardiographer. And I've been doing this job for about seven years now. I graduated in a school in Canada and I currently also work in a hospital in Canada. So you might be wondering what a cardiac sonographer does, um, what do they look at, and I'm here to answer some of those questions. So this is just a brief overview, but essentially what a cardiac sonographer does is they do a procedure called echocardiograms. And echocardiograms are basically just ultrasounds of the heart. So a lot of people often mistake in echocardiograms with our electrocardiograms. Uh, actually, echocardiograms, they look inside of the heart with ultrasound technology. And essentially, we look at three things. So we look at the overall function of the heart muscle. We look at the structures of the heart including the valves, and we also look at the blood flow. So how well the blood is going from point A to point B, and if there's any backflow to it. On a requisition, you might see something that says TTE, that stands for transthoracic echocardiogram, meaning that we use the camera along parts of the chest to see the inside of the heart. There's other versions of this test as well. You might see TTE plus saline, meaning that we're injecting tiny little bubbles into the heart to see if there's any shunts in between the chambers. You might also see TTE plus contrast, which essentially helps us to look inside of the heart chambers to see if there's any signs of blood clotting or to even see how well the heart muscle is moving. You might also see stress echocardiography, which essentially is a combination of a stress test and an echocardiogram. And essentially we put the patient in a situation where they are put under stress. So either they're biking or they're on a treadmill or they're injected with dibutamine. And we increase their heart rate so that we can see for ourselves how the heart muscle is actually functioning while their heart rate is elevated. You might also see something called a TEE, which stands for transesophageal echocardiograms. And you might be asked to assist with that. So essentially, it's a camera going down the esophagus to look inside of the heart using ultrasound technology. So one of the pros in becoming a cardiac sonographer is actually how relatively short the program is, as well as how affordable it can be. For my own personal experience, I graduated from a graduate certificate program. It was about 16 months and it cost me about $10,000 back in 2014. I do want to make a note that, you know, just because my graduate certificate program was so short, it doesn't mean that was the only schooling that I did after high school. So essentially, I did spend about five years in university. I graduated in kinesiology. And right after I graduated, I went into this graduate certificate program. And this program in particular, one of the requirements was that you either had to graduate from a health science program or you were a health a science professional. So either like maybe a, a respiratory therapist or an ECG tech or a physician. So anything in the healthcare field, they would favor your application. So my particular program was about 16 months, but all across Canada, you'll see that a lot of the programs range between a year and a half to up to four years, depending on how in-depth their program can be. I do suggest that if you are researching into different ultrasound programs that you do make sure that they are accredited just because it is a very hard profession to master and you really want to make sure that the education that you're receiving is really going to be the best for your career in the long run. This profession can be very difficult to master so I do suggest you make sure that you look into a program that will give you that confidence knowing that once you finish the program that you'll be good on your own and that you'll have that confidence to really present to the physician what you see. In terms of tuition, so it can range between $10,000 all the way up to mid $20,000 uh, on average. 
And so a lot of it is because of the length of the program. So mine was a relatively shorter program. So mine ended up being about $10,000. So some of the programs that you might see may be ranging from two to four years. And part of that reason is because one, some schools do offer university degree programs. So by the end of the four years, you would be graduating with a university degree. Whereas other programs, you can graduate with either a certificate or a advanced diploma. Either way, it's going to give you the same position, which is either a sonographer or a cardiac sonographer. Some programs are also very specific. So mine in particular, I did a program in diagnostic cardiac sonography. So my specialty is ultrasounds of the heart. Whereas there's other programs where they can offer you general ultrasound programs or even general plus cardiac ultrasound. Another pro to being a cardiac sonographer is that you actually get to be a part of the healthcare field. So for a long time, I thought that, you know, the only way that you could work in a hospital was if you were a doctor or a nurse. But I slowly became to realize in university that there's actually a realm of specific healthcare positions that you can go into so that you can also be part of the healthcare field. So an echocardiogram ranges from half an hour to an hour, depending on how complex the case can be. And this actually might be a benefit for you if you're the type of person that doesn't like to deal with people um, for such a long time. So the reason why I say this is because, you know, when you think about nursing, you think about how they spend pretty much the whole day with the same patient. So just imagine if you're with a grumpy patient for the next 12 hours. So that could be very tough for you if you're not that kind of person that can deal with situations like that. Whereas cardiac sonographers, because we're only there for such a short amount of time. And I want to mention this because, you know, part of looking into a career is making sure that it's going to be a right fit for you. So for me personally, I don't know if being a nurse would have been something that I could be good at personally. I don't know how I could react if I had a grumpy patient for 12 hours straight. Whereas being a cardiac sonographer, you're only there for an hour at most. So if you are in a very uncomfortable situation, you know that you're gonna be out of there in about an hour. Another pro to this career is that it can be very lucrative and it is very internationally friendly, meaning you can pick up your job and just move somewhere else and continue to work as a cardiac sonographer without much hassle. So what I mean by lucrative is that sometimes you might have opportunities where you can work overtime or you can make double what you usually make. You can also have situations where they offer signing bonuses. So sometimes if there is an area where it's hard to fill a position, they may give you some sort of incentive to actually move there. If you don't want to live there permanently, there are also options where you can work locum. So you can just commit to a short amount of time and they will give you a high amount depending on how long you stay. You can also get opportunities where you get paid per patient. So every patient you do, you could get maybe 30 or $40 per patient. So there are cons to this profession, unfortunately, which is something you also need to consider. One of them mainly is easily you can get uh, injured. So a lot of people, they say that the first year is really tough on the body. They feel a lot of shoulder and neck pain. For me personally, I ended up getting a lot of hip pain. I ended up getting physio done for a few weeks in order to relieve the pain. So a lot of people just think that, you know, our jobs are so easy. We just hold a camera and we just press some buttons and that's it. But they don't realize how we're actively holding, you know, this static force on this arm. So just imagine you're putting about 20 pounds of static force for about half an hour. And then at the same time, you're going back and forth with this arm to press the buttons and to make sure that you're getting all the images. So, you know, that all adds up. So, you know, you do it half an hour to an hour for every patient. You do about eight or nine patients a day. You do it for 40 hours a week. So eventually it does just catch up on you. So another con to this profession is also how difficult it is to actually master the skill. So, you know, it can be easy to just take the pictures, but to actually look for pathology can take a long time because 
this profession can be very subjective. So what I mean by that is that sometimes you can miss pathology very easily. So that's why you want to continue to practice to train your eye to recognize when you see something real versus something that isn't really there which are known as artifacts. So another con to this profession is the burnout that happens in this career. You know, some people, they push themselves to the point where they want to please the physicians, even though they know themselves that they physically can't handle it. And it happens a lot. And sometimes in your work situation, you might be pressured into doing so, but you really have to think about where is that point where you're going to say, no, I need to protect my own body, my own health in order for me to extend this career. For me, I think one of the important things about this career that I told myself was that I didn't want to come to the point where I was being treated as a factory worker, somebody that just pumped out these exams for the benefit of the physician to make more money. And so I stuck true to my guns and I'm really happy that I did so because seven years later, I'm still in this career and I still love what I do. So in terms of salary, it can really range. So I have seen it as low as $25 an hour when you first start off, but I've also seen it go all the way up to $60 an hour, depending on where you're located. I know in Alberta, there are many opportunities where you can get a higher hourly rate and you can also get opportunities where you get signing bonuses as well. So I have had colleagues who have gotten $25,000 signing bonuses just to relocate themselves to that area for a couple years. And in the end, you know, that helped them overall with their savings, their debt reduction, and they would just use that experience to go back to their hometown and they would already have such a head start in their, in their life. So you might be wondering if this job is really for you. So personally, I believe that this was a great way for me to enter the healthcare field. I found that, you know, if you're a people person, if you really like enjoying interactions with people, if you really love having a challenge in your career because it's not easy to master, but when you put in the effort to actually improve, you'll see the changes and you'll see how rewarding it can be when you work on mastering the skill. I find that it that's really enjoyable to, to see. If you want a opportunity to get out of a low wage situation and into a field where you can make much more than minimum wage, in a shorter amount of time, then I say go for it. It's very rewarding in the end. And I find that you know, at the end of the day, I'm very happy with what I do for a living. I find that even now, after seven years, I still love my job because I find that at the end of the day, it's very rewarding to see and to know that you're helping with patient outcome. And you might not see them for too long, but you help them with a piece of the puzzle in their road to recovery. Okay, thank you guys so much for watching. And I really hope that this was informative for you to decide whether or not cardiac sonography is really for you. And if you wanna see more videos like this, please hit the subscribe button because I'll be making more in-depth videos on what it's like being a cardiac sonographer and what it took for me to become a cardiac sonographer today. So I'll see you guys again soon. Bye.